All right, what you're going to do first is you are going to take yarn, just any kind of yarn, and you're going to cut it to the length of whatever the project is that you're doing. So, and then you're going to double it over. So if you're wanting it to be, you know, like this long, then you're going to double that over. So you're going to make it two times the length that you want it because you're going to double it over. And after you do that, you're going to take a needle. This is the type of needle that I use. And you're going to take, and it has a, a big eye on the end of it. You're going to take that, and you're going to feed the yarn through your hole there. And then you're going to have it like that coming through your hole all the way down to the end. Now on the end there, I put a um, clothespin, and that helps keep that weight down. Also, if you have a long project that you're doing, you can actually take the clothespin, and you can wrap your yarn around the clothespin. And you can keep letting that out as you go, especially if you have a really long project that you're working on. My project's not very long, what I'm going to show you today. All right, so once you put your yarn in uh, on the peg, or through the peg, then you're going to put it back here. Now, I've taken out all my pegs but four. This would make like a scarf or something very small, or if you were making like a coaster, or, you know, something small like that to set something on. Um, but you can customize with the different holes and the different pegs. So, if you use the full length of the loom, you would make something like a chair pad, a lap blanket, that kind of thing. Um, so, you can really customize that. But right now, I'm using four pegs. And I have roving, and what I did was I took my roving, and I took the end, and I wrapped it around, and I have a little sponge like this, and I put that underneath it, and I take my felting needle, and I just uh, felted that together there so it'll hold it on the peg. So you can do that. That's very easy to do. After you do that, then you're ready to weave. So I'm going to start with my weaving, of course, is in the front. I'm going to go behind the second peg around the back of that, come around the front of the third peg, and then around the last peg. All right, and then you're gonna just reverse it. Then you're gonna go back this way, and this way, and the more you do this, the faster your hands will get, and you'll be able to move quickly. And you just keep working it, and you're gonna work it all the way around until you come to the top of the pegs. And when you get to the top of the pegs, then what you're going to do is you're going to pull the pegs up and you're going to slide your work down um, down your thread or down your yarn. All right, now when you pull this up, be careful and pay attention to what's going on here with your end. If you notice, this is getting ready to wrap around the back of the first peg. So when I pull my peg out, I want to make sure and keep it there in front of that roving and then put it right back down. And then the other ones will just follow... The main one you're going to be concerned with is going to be um, where, you're, where you stopped because you want to make sure and do it the same way. All right, so you're going to pull each peg out. And as you do, you can slide your work down your yarn. And you can see there what I already have. So then I'm ready to go again. So I'm going to go and I'm just going to do the same thing that I did. And around, I'm going to come back around, and I'm just going to keep working it from one end, end of the loom to the other until I fill the pegs up again. And like I said, you'll learn how to hold this, and it'll get faster, and you'll sort of get a feel for how, how you're doing this. So there again, I'm going to pull that out. Now I've got that behind, so I want to leave that back there and then put it back down in the hole so that way it won't mess up what I've already done. And then I pull the middle one out, this middle one out, and the last one. As you pull it out, you can kind of push your project down that you're working on. All right, and then there you can see that. All right, so then I'm going to just do it. I'm going to go back and keep doing what I was doing. Around, around, and come back around. And I'm going to do this till I fill it up again. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pull my peg out, keeping my roving in the back there because that's how I stopped. And you know, you can change this up. You can, um, if you want to 
pull your pegs out and your and your work ends down here. You can do that, but just be cautious of how you're ending when you stop so that you make sure that you start the same way that you stop. So like when I do it on this end, if this roving was getting ready to go behind and wrap back around the front, I want to make sure that it's going to do that each time. And so, and then you can push that down some more. And then you're just going to keep doing it. So this is very quick. And you can make scarves. You can make chair pads. Even the chair pads with this, that runs the full length of the loom. It is very fast to make. So it's a great way to make presents, birthday gifts, wedding presents. And you can do it quickly. And it looks nice and it's handmade, but it doesn't take a lot of time. As you're doing this weaving, you can also push down like that and push your work tight here. And that, that way you can get a little more on the pegs if you're wanting to do that. So you just keep doing that. And then, of course, we pull out again and put it back in the hole. Pull this one out. And then you can push your work down. Now your work's going to kind of move down on its own, but if you want to slide it down, you can. Also, depending on how tight you want your scarf or your chair pad, um, if you're using roving, I would recommend pulling, uh, making it tighter because roving is pretty loose. Um, and if you're wanting it to be like a chair pad that's going to somebody's going to sit on that, um, or a scarf that somebody's going to wear, you might want it a little bit tighter. Now, of course, your, your tightness, you've got your tightness across here, but you've also got your tightness here. So when you feel this, if it feels too stiff, you can slide it down as you're working it. And also at the end, and, and that will kind of loosen that up so it doesn't feel so tight there. But you can see here what I have. Now, if I was finished, the best thing to do is leave it on the peg, pull that around, pull your end off of your roving or your yarn, and then you're going to want to needle felt that. You can put your um, work right here and you can needle felt the end of that if you're wanting to do that. I'll go ahead and do that. Um, also with this needle felting, um, as you go you'll see your scarf, especially if you're using roving, there may be places that you don't like the way it looks and you want, don't want it sticking out as much and you'd like to poke it in a little bit. Um, like, for instance, right here, sticking out a little bit. Maybe I don't like that, so I'll just needle felt that in. And then, that way, that will hold that. And you can fix that however you like it to where it looks nice. You can go ahead and pull up, because this is going to be your fringe right here when you cut this. You can go ahead and pull those up if you want to, however, however long you want your fringe to be. And then when you're done with that, you can take scissors and you can snip your ends here. And uh, that will be your fringe. Now on the end, when you do your fringe, what you're going to do is you're going to have this where it comes out. And this is the end that had the clothespins on it. So I took all my clothespins off. I have my fringe for the scarf. What I would do is because for every peg, you're going to have two uh, strands. I would take one of my strands... And I would feed it back through the loop. That way you have one on the top and one on the bottom. And then you can make a slip knot that goes right up against your scarf. However tight you want to do that. And you make a slip knot. And there's your fringe there. You can cut that to whatever size. That's a little bit long. But you can cut that to whatever size you want to do that. Okay, and here's another example of what the fringe would look like. And you can top pull that right up against there if you'd like to. Now what I'm going to show you. Now that, this would be for a scarf. But if you had a long project like the chair pad. What you're going to have when you work all the way down through here, of course there's 23 pegs, for every peg you're going to have two strands. And what's going to happen too is because you're weaving, you're going to end up having um, two strands on the top 
and two strands on the bottom. So when you're looking at that scarf, you can see I have one here and one here. Now what you can do is you can take those, instead of pulling anything back through, you've already got one on the top and the bottom, so just bring those two together. That gives you four strands for a fringe and make a nice slip knot run up against that scarf snug it up and then there you have a nice thick fringe and you can do that all the way down your chair pad and there again you can cut your fringe to whatever size you like and that makes a nice fringe on your chair pad but for the scarf I would do that and so that way for every peg that you have you'll have two um, strands of fringe and it looks nice for a scarf but for a chair pad it looks nice to have the thicker fringe the more the four strands um, so that's how you do that uh, if you have any questions be sure and email me. I'll be happy to help you out and I hope this video helps and have fun with your loom.